faith to move mountains right we've all heard of this phrase and of course this faith this phrase comes from what jesus says when he says that um if you uh, speak to a mountain by faith you know it will move into the sea but also the bible does not just talk about faith to move mountains it also talks about uh, faith to possess mountains amen it talks about faith to possess mountains and so this morning we are going to look at a portion or and a character who had faith to possess mountains so we look at um, the book of joshua chapter 14 10 and 12 it says here and now behold the lord has kept me alive and he, as he said these 45 years ever since the lord spoke this word to moses while israel wandered in the wilderness and now here i am this day 85 years old as yet i am strong this day as on the day that moses sent me just as my strength was then so now is my strength for war both for going out and for coming in now therefore give me this mountain of which the lord spoke in that day for you heard in that day how the anakim were there and that the great city and that the cities were great and fortified it may be that the lord will be with me and i shall be able to drive them out as the lord said and joshua blessed him and gave him hebron okay this morning we are going to look at this particular portion and this character and you know what is it that he does and we look at uh, he has a very uh, he bursts on the scene actually in the book of numbers chapter 13 we can go to numbers chapter 13 and uh, we know this story because it became a big issue this event became an issue and it became a point of contention in the in the history of israel numbers chapter 13 you see what uh, the lord says to moses over here that send spies to canaan and he says for i am giving to to the children of israel and he, he because he knows that this is his inheritance and he says in verse 17 he says go um, up into the south and up into the mountains see what the land is like whether the people who dwell in this is moses speaking to them whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak etc etc he says inspect the land and see how is it how it is and he tells them look at the cities the camps the strongholds he's basically sending them on a recon mission an intelligence gathering mission and if you see in verse 6 of this chapter he says one of the spies who was chosen was from the tribe of judah was the caleb of caleb the son of jephune one person from each tribe so from judah it was caleb and now what happens is these people go into canaan and they bring back some of the grapes they bring back some of the fruits etc but when they go there in 27 and 28 and 29 he says they say this is their report he says we went to the land where you sent us it truly flows with milk and honey and this is its fruit nevertheless the people who dwell in the land are strong the cities are fortified and very large moreover we saw the descendants of anak there right the amalekites dwell in the land of the south the hittites the jebusites the amorites so on and so forth the canaanites dwell by the sea um, um, and um, along the banks of the jordan then caleb quieted the people before moses and said let us go up at once and take possession for we are able to overcome it but but the men who had gone up with him said we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we and it says they say the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature there we saw the giants the descendants of anak come from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight now look here 
this place he talks about the anakim and we know that the anakim are come from what we call the uh, the, the anakim the rephaim etc etc and you know you will find their history in genesis chapter 6 we are not turning there where it talks about the nephilim and it talks about the giants in those days and we know that um, uh the the if you look at if you look at second samuel it talks about the giants and he says you know in one place i think it is chapter 21 was 20 it says that the person had six um toes and six fingers and you know it it is not uh, these these people were not of regular human dna right the bible says in genesis chapter 6 the sons of god and the daughters of men meaning the fallen angels and the daughters of men so we know that it was a corrupt bloodline so to say and it says here that these anakim were giants these are the same giants right that's why god commanded these people to to israel to uh, conquer and to destroy and you'll find even in the time of david they are still finally fighting and defeating the giants of which goliath was one of them and now so we see here that he caleb seems to be a man of faith we know that him and joshua were the only people who gave a good report the people come back with an adverse report but he has a different spirit and it says here in uh, 14 verse 6 it says but joshua the son of nun and caleb the son of jephune who were among those who had spied out the land tore their clothes because the people are begun to rebel and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of israel saying the land we passed through to spy out is an exceedingly good land if the lord delights in us then he will bring us into this land and give it to us a land of which flows with milk and honey and then see what they says only do not rebel against the lord nor fear the people of the land for they are our bread their protection has departed from them and the lord with is with us do not fear them so you see here a man of faith his uh, perspective the sight that he has the way he sees things is contrary to the natural view because the natural view is very evident they are giants the bible describes them as giants right and he says how can you fight giants right you physically you're not a match and the natural view was exactly what the other spies said that it does not make sense to go up and pick a fight with a giant right but here Caleb has a contrary view he says let us go up and take possession for we are able to overcome and then he says that these people are our bread their protection has departed from them and the lord is with us see one of the lessons that we have to draw from here is that for a christian our sight has to be a sight of faith we walk not by sight but by faith so the sight of faith is a spiritual sight it it ha- it takes a spiritual perspective it 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 it, uh, it depends on spiritual discernment you know what is natural to a person might seem like an opportunity but from the lord it might be be wary there is a way that seems right to a man but the end thereof is destruction you know and on the other hand where there is a way like this which is an opportunity which the lord is saying go up and take it but the natural man has fear and aversion amen you look here again now he says now the lord says of him in chapter 14 verse 24 you know the lord says none of these people will go but in verse 24 he says but my servant caleb because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully i will bring him bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it right now the amalekites and the canaanites dwell in the valley it's okay so you see here god testifies he has a different spirit what spirit does he have okay 
what spirit does he have what spirit what manner of spirit should you and i have that should be different from that of a natural man let's look at isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 and 3 this is a prophecy about the messiah and you know it says here the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of the of knowledge and of the fear of the lord <coughs> you see here the sevenfold spirit right the sevenfold spirit of god and you know each day we need to pray to god for this consummate spirit to be within us to receive the infilling a fresh infilling of the holy spirit each day and the sevenfold spirit is so consummate it says the spirit of the lord of wisdom and understanding counsel and might knowledge and fear of the lord amen it says all of these and you know we need all of these to navigate through our life all of these we need to navigate through our life and particularly we see in the in in the in the uh, life of caleb that he has the spirit of counsel and might and of the fear of the lord because of the fear of the lord that he possesses he fears no man nor giant and also he possesses the spirit of counsel and might you know we see this that his understanding is enlightened to see that the land ahead of him which is to be possessed is an opportunity and that these people are nothing apart from the lord it is the same spirit which david had he says who is this uncircumcised philistine you know when we come up against enmity when we come up against adversity right we see that god has given us a spirit of might and we see that god has given us a spirit of the fear of the lord let's go again to second timothy 1 verse 7 see you look at how uh, the enemy can choke you and paralyze you by the spirit of the fear of fear and i want to tell you that the first thing that grips you when you want to obey the lord one of the first things will be fear one of the first things that will prevent your advancement in the lord is fear you know the favor of the lord was upon joseph and that was a favor if you look at you know how it, what it was his blessing it was a blessing of advancement of growth of increase and expansion you look at the blessing of jabez he says oh that you would bless me indeed and that your hand would be upon me that you would and that you would enlarge my territory you see the blessing of the lord requires fearlessness and one of the first things to choke us is fear and see how powerful fear is because it says there god has not given us a spirit of fear but in combat or standing against fear you need three he says but of power and of love and of a sound mind you know we need all of this and you, uh, it says so god has not given us a spirit of fear and I, you know we need to agree with this every day because the bible says ever so often fear not be not dismayed do not be discouraged i am with you when you walk through the waters when you walk through the fires you will not be drowned you will not be burned for i am with you says the lord and so he says again and again and we need to come in agreement with this truth that the lord is with us and that we do not have a spirit of fear and said but it is a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind when you take a new step in your life when you begin something when you initiate something when you see a point of adversity that you know is bringing disturbance and disorder in your life you know that it is a place that the lord has called you to possess you will first be confronted with the spirit of fear and it says your god has not given us a spirit but of power the same thing the might 
and of love and of a sound mind. You know, sometimes you lose your sound mind. Sometimes you lose the ability to think straight. Sometimes you fret and you know, you lose your composure. You know, I think of Saul. The enemy is standing there with, before him and he's got to do a sacrifice. But he has to wait for Samuel. He has to wait for Samuel to come and do the sacrifice. And he loses his composure because, you know, the entire nation, the army is assembled. Everybody is assembled. And Samuel is late. And so he says, let me do the sacrifice. And the moment he does the sacrifice, Samuel shows up and says, the kingdom is taken away from you because of this. He lost his sound mind. Soundness of mind. God has given soundness of mind. He has not given us absent-mindedness. I struggled with this for many years. So for a long time I had to confront myself with this. I have a sound mind. You know, when you're behind time, when you're late, sometimes you'll forget 10 things. Why? You've lost your soundness of mind. So it says, now let's look at um, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 36. This explains a little bit more clearly why uh, Caleb has so much confidence in the book of Joshua. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 36. It says there, Except Caleb the son of Jephune, he shall see it and to him and his children, I am giving the land on which he walked because he wholly followed the Lord. So you see there was his promise that he was drawing from. He says the land on which he walked, the land that he desired basically, it is the same promise that God gave Joshua at the start of you know, the book of Joshua when Joshua is starting his time, his term as a leader. It says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 3, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. And then you know the rest of that chapter. It says, it says in verse 9, again it tells him there, Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now you see here, uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 36, let's go back to Deuteronomy 1 verse 36. It says, I'm giving him the land on which he walked because he wholly followed the Lord. Now we know that he was, uh, um, he says in the book of Joshua, I was um, 40 years then. 40 years when he received that promise. Now if you turn to book of Deuteronomy 2 verse 14 and maybe you can put one finger here and also go to Numbers 32 verse 8. So Numbers 32 verse 8 says, Thus your fathers did when I sent them away from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. So that was a place from where God told them, all these 12 spies go and see the land, right? And now 2 verse 14 says, At the, And the time we took to come from Kadesh Barnea until we crossed over the valley of the Zered was 38 years. So that means Caleb was 40 when he was at Kadesh Barnea, when he received the promise. He's about 78 when he enters Israel, right? When he enters Canaan. And for seven years, he helps Joshua. Seven years, he helps in the conquest. And then having done that, now he goes up to Joshua when the, when the uh, inheritance is being dis uh, decided or, uh, or divided. And he asks, I want this. Now let's go back to the book of Joshua. As we come to chapter 14, I want you to read, turn the page and read one verse in 18 verse 3. See, this is why you and I cannot afford to be safe Christians. You know what is safe Christians? Christians who do not exercise their faith. Christians who do not 
aspire to possess all that the Lord has in store. You know, Christians who are just satisfied being where they are at the spiritual altitude that you are. You must aspire to increase in faith and what the, and in commensurate with the capacity of your faith, you must possess all that the Lord has in store for you. Till the last day of your life. Right? See this. Then Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long will you neglect to go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? He rebukes them for not possessing that which has been apportioned to them. Right? And Psalm 16 says, The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. So your good inheritance, the lines which have fallen to you in pleasant places, and Psalm 16 says, you hold my inheritance, you hold my lot. If I do not possess this, I am a useless son. Worthless is he who receives an inheritance and does not take care of it because he has shown himself to be unfaithful to his father. Therefore, you and I cannot afford to sit at the level of faith that we are. We must continue to expand and grow in faith and in possession thereafter. Amen? Amen? Your life must be full of challenges. Look at Caleb. At the age of 85, he says, Give me that mountain. You promised it's mine. I shall not leave anything of which that which was promised to me. You know how diligent and how zealous are we to appropriate the promises of God. We are meant to walk in the will of God, but also to appropriate those promises. Amen? Yes, not to do the promises, because if you do the promise, then like Abraham did the promise and he birthed the Ishmael. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do the will and receive the promise. So it says here in verse in chapter 14, he says here again, <clears throat> And yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now therefore... Give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim was there and the cities were great and fortified. You know, he's asking for a difficult thing. He's asking for a difficult thing. He's purposely asking for a difficult thing. You know, who else asks for a difficult thing? Elisha asked for a difficult thing. He asked for a not so easy thing. You know, how many of us ask God for difficult things? I'm asking you because I want to stretch my faith. I'm asking you because I want to know you. I want to know how you are at that time when it is difficult. I'm asking you for a big thing, for a challenge, because I want to see how is it that I commune with you and fellowship with you on that road when I go to possess that big thing. You know, I remember once our founder saying that, you know, um, only monkeys think peanuts. It is not for you and I to think peanuts and be satisfied with peanuts. You know, he is asking for a difficult thing and he's explaining. I'm asking, it's like God provoking, you know. He says, Go, sacrifice your son, your only son, your son whom you love. Go sacrifice. Here again, he's going deeper. He's saying, I want more difficult thing. He says, Give me this mountain, not a valley, not a plain, not a fertile alluvial soil. He says, Give me this mountain, the place on which the Anakim were there and their cities were great. On the mountain there are giants and they have built cities and they are great and they are fortified. He says, I will drive them out. 
the Lord will be with me and I will drive them out. And so the Bible says Joshua blessed him with a difficult thing. How many of us consider difficult things as a blessing? You know, a difficult situation, a difficult job, a difficult child, a difficult spouse, a difficult business, a difficult boss is a mountain. It is meant for you to possess, not to abandon and run somewhere. Otherwise you live the life of a loser. Or the mountain will come again. He will bring you back to the mountain. Because the Bible says, the Lord's hand is not shortened. Don't run away from mountains. Be humble enough to say, Lord, I'm scared, now help me. Show me what I must do. Because the mountain is promised land. And a mountain, though difficult, once it becomes yours, it becomes your stronghold. You understand stronghold? A point that you can rally to. A point that you can depend on. When you are at, under attack, you retreat to a stronghold. You know, that's why the Bible says, you know, <coughs> sorry. It says, um, in 1 Samuel 23 verse 14, you know, when David was running from Saul and he was under attack, he says, David remained in the mountains in the wilderness of Ziv. So he goes to the wilderness and he's not content to remain in the forest or the wilderness. He goes into the mountainous area of the forest. Why? Because it's a stronghold. There is refuge and security in the mountain. You understand? And it is refuge and security that you will pass on as legacy to your descendants. The mountains that you conquer, chances are they will not have to conquer. Amen? Why do we fight? Why do we go to possess? Because God is eternal and also it is important for posterity. That which I possess now, I impart. Amen. So, he says mountains are challenges. And um, if you look at Psalm 121, it says, I lift my eyes unto the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Mountains are areas of help. And the Bible, you know, uh, Israelites had a reputation. The Philistines and the enemy said, their God is a God of the mountains. They are places of elevation and they are places of worship. They are places of meeting God. Right? And so, you see, you look, again, you look at how does this happen? How does he have this kind of faith and strength? And um, he, he does it, ultimately he... He defeats them. You can look at the next chapter and then his uh, his son-in-law, that is his nephew also, uh, defeats the uh, enemies. You look at chapter 15 verse 14 says, Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak from there, Sheshai, Ahiman and Talmai, the children of Anak. And you know, he, he's, his bold character you see, it is imparted to his child because his daughter comes boldly when she wants inheritance. She says, um, give me the springs of water also. The upper and the lower springs both. You know, boldness. He's bold, full of courage because his sight is different. I want you to come with me to the book of Romans chapter 4. This is talking about Abraham. And he talks about righteousness through faith. And then for a moment, um, Paul gets into describing the faith. right? And so he says here, he says the promise in verse 16 says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace. And then he goes on to talk about Abraham. And he says in 18, Who contrary to hope in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. 
you see how god taught abraham faith was he taught him to say to reckon that it is done and to say how is that he changed his name so abraham Ab abram his name was and then he changed him to say that i am a father of many nations though he was yet not a father of nation though he had yet not received the child of promise yet he was going around telling people that my name is abraham that means i am the father of many nations and so it says here who contrary to hope in hope believed now you see in paul says these three remain faith hope and love right but i'll tell you only one is eternal that is love hope is for the future faith is for now so he says in hope he believed that means the substance that he that constructs his hope the what 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 constitutes his hope he believes for the now you understand he says i'm hoping for a child but now that which constitutes his hope he believes it so it is not now an appointment for the future it is now amen you understand this he says here who contrary to hope in hope believed that he became the father of many nations so because why do we believe that it is already done because the bible says he has given me everything that pertains to life and godliness and then he says here not being weak in faith he did not consider his own adverse situation is that not what caleb did he did not consider that which the natural eyes fed him listen let me tell you faith and doubt are matters of source they are function of the information that you draw from a particular source let me give you an illustration suppose we have a water problem in this place two trucks turn up one has dirty water one has good water i take my pipe and my bucket which water will my bucket contain it based on which pipe i go of which truck i go and connect right now here it is doubt depends on who you listen to faith depends on who you listen to one of the first things that our professors teachers in b school is to ask this question we go we make presentations etc you know and they'll ask us who's your source who told you this is the same thing no that god asked adam and eve who told you who is your source if you're listening to anything outside the word you will have doubt nobody is interested in your finding your spiritual inheritance if it is outside the word of god neither the world nor the devil nor the flesh but if you listen then what roman says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word that becomes your reality amen that's why he tells that this book of the law not depart from you and the king when he becomes a king he should read a copy of this law every day so that he has faith and therefore by faith he pleases god right it says here he did not consider his own body he did not waver <coughs> he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief but was strengthened in faith that is what god imparts that is what faith imparts it impart strength giving glory to god i look at jehoshaphat he did not consider like abraham did not consider his own body he did not consider the three nations that had ganged up to fight but he looks to the lord and he says are you not the god and then he says have you not done this and then he says will you not do it again you know you go home and read the three questions of jehoshaphat to god are you not have you not and will you not and he gives glory and being fully convinced that 
what he had promised he was able to perform you know what convinces you what convinces that's why i said where do you take your pipe which truck you take your pipe to which tank do you take your pipe to where are your senses tuned to where is your mind your attention tuned to he who has ears to hear let him hear but how do you hear this is just an instrument you have to listen with your heart When I used to teach Sunday school in Pune, I used to ask, "How do you listen?" I said, "With my ears." I said, "No, you have to listen with your mind." I used to tell them, "I mean, you listen with your ears, but I used to, I was making a point that your ears can be open, but your mind can be elsewhere." I said, "Listen with your heart to God's word, and it says, then you will be convinced by it, and faith will birth, and you will have faith to possess the mountains that are ahead of you." and having possessed the mountains ahead of you then you will be qualified and you to to part with a good legacy and inheritance to your future generation you will be qualified to hear from the lord that you have possessed all that i gave you that i wanted you to possess that is why we press on in prayer and reading the word that is why we don't stop at the spiritual experiences the truth the victories that we've had we press on for more amen so is fully convinced what he had promised he was also able to perform see this is what is the crux of this message are you fully convinced that what he had promised what he promises he is able to perform for your life this is the story of caleb <coughs> fully convinced and therefore he possesses the land and then he drives them out he drives them out and he leaves a good inheritance and his inheritance surrounds hebron which is a, a city that is given to uh, the priests aaron and his descendants and also there in the tombs of the patriarchs you know he received a good inheritance i pray this day that we draw encouragement from the life of caleb that we are not satisfied where we are that we have spiritual ambitions no spiritual ambitions like paul he says i forget things and i press on forward he is not somebody to wait for life to happen for him he wants to go and grab he says i want to apprehend that for which christ apprehended me i want to grab i want to possess i want to take hold of that reason for which Christ got hold of me I was on that way that way to destruction Christ got my hand and said like this Now why he caught my hand what purpose that it that he did that I want to fulfill all of that Or you can live a lazy life Get up go to work take care of the kids come back Nine o'clock, ten o'clock. Get up. Go to church on Sundays. If you feel lazy, don't go. Go for picnics. Go to the mall. Blown like a boat by the wind, without any sails of its own. This is the life you can live, or you can, if you crave to hear a good and faithful servant, enter into my rest. then you be like Caleb and say give me this mountain you promised it's mine give me the difficult things give me the double portion elijah i will follow you from gilgal to bethel to here to jericho to jordan past the river i will keep my eyes open till the chariots of fire come and take you so that that mantle which comes 
I can pick up and then I will also divide the Jordan. Amen? Shall we bow our heads? Thank you Lord this day for the life of Caleb. Give us also courage and strength that is drawn from your word. <coughs> Help us to look at your promises and Lord to to be convinced and persuaded by them. Help us to tune our senses, natural and spiritual, to your word and not to other sources that will give us doubt and fear, but be persuaded by the word of God and grow in faith, grow in grace and appropriate all that you have given for us to possess. Though the giants may be there our way to hinder, yet we will walk in the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we commit and surrender ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.